What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a variety of reviews for this week. Um, we got a movie review, a couple of TV show reviews, and then video game updates as far as the review of the one I just finished and then the start of the replay of another one. So it's a full whole mixed bag of different stuff. Um, I don't have too much on the Android side as well, as well for a review, but I will have an update to something I think I shared last week as far as doing that a little bit more easily. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Um, so to so start it off with this week's film review, I had a chance to watch Fast X, the latest um, installment in the Fast and the Furious franchise. I was surprised that it was available for streaming so fast, but and also for purchase for that matter, so I decided to give it a watch at home and see how it holds up, if it's any good or bad or um, the usual stuff. And I want to say that it pretty much holds true to the last few films in the series, where if you're a fan of the franchise and what they've been doing since basically I want to say the third or fourth film then you're not going to get anything um, fantastically new or different or anything like that. The most um, fun scene in the film for this time around was uh, Dom crashing two helicopters into each other with, with his car, so that was pretty cool. Um, the two biggest, um, not necessarily reveals, but um, in reintroductions into the franchises were um, Han, the guy from the third film, who's a friend of Dom and all that, um, he's back and alive for some reason, so that kind of didn't make sense to me, or what's going on, he's basically like back from the dead, so he never really died to begin with, which makes me now want to go back and see what they did, because I know that a few movies ago, I think there was something weird about that, because they're starting to go out of order as far as the timing of the films, so I thought that was weird, and then also now, um, Gal Gadot's character is back, I think, and I forget her name, I think it was Giselle or something like that, another G name, but um, she's back as a, as a um, teaser towards the end of the film, so I uh, don't remember what happened to her. I thought she had died as well, but I could be mistaken. I actually don't remember the actual fate of her character, so uh, she's back at the end in the submarine that they had, uh, I think, last film or the film before. Um, I guess she's working with Cypher for whatever reason, or she was held, ca held captive there or something. We don't know. But between that and then the rocks scene at the end of the film, I think it was a mid credit scene, they're basically setting up for another Fast and the Furious film, so we'll see kind of what's going on there. And probably have a revolve around, more around Han, Giselle, and The Rock. So overall, not a terrible film. It was more of a sequel to the film. I think the maybe the third or fourth one of the prior films where they were in Bra basically the film from Brazil which is so Fast X is essentially a sequel to that where now we have the son of that Brazilian crime lord uh, trying to claim vengeance on um, Dom and his family so that's basically this film and like I said it's not too different from prior films or the past couple of films at least it's all about family and someone's trying to break up Dom's family so getting back at him so um a lot of that and then basically the and then of course the first maybe 10 or 15 minutes of the film is a lot of retrospective with everybody so remembering their early days a little bit of in memoriam for brian um you have a lot of the introduction to the cat the original crew and the cast you have um their dom and um jordana brewster's grandmother um john cena's back for this film and then you have um Dwayne Johnson in the, or not Dwayne Johnson, but um, Jason Momoa in the role of the bad guy. So overall, a very fun character for him, much like all of his other characters. Um, but it's also not too different from, you know, his Aquaman or any other characters that he's played in the past, you know, decades. So just a fun character. I love his charisma, his personality, and 
everything he brings to the film. So overall, a good film worth watching. If you're a fan of the prior films, if you have, if you've kind of fallen off of the franchise, you're not going to expect anything different. So, um, and it's less of like the crazy stunts and things like that. So you don't have them, you know, driving a car from one high rise skyscraper to another, like they did in Abu Dhabi, I think, whichever film that was. So, but the flip side is, and they of course are not going to space this time, but then again, you have, you know, Dom crashing two helicopters into each other. So that's probably the most crazy stunt in the film. So, um, and that's of course after the whole stunt in the beginning of the film where you're essentially having Dom play pinball through city streets with a bomb. So, but I did actually like that scene. It was actually particularly enjoyable as far as the whole Rube Goldberg effectness of that whole stuff, that whole um, sequence. So uh, it has its ups and downs. For me in general, I've enjoyed the films. I know that they're not nothing great, but also being a completionist, they're not doing anything too terribly out of the norm for the film. So you're not gonna. So if you're expecting something new or different, um, basically don't. But if you're a fan of the films or you just if you've enjoyed them for the fun that they are, then definitely watch this one. It doesn't do. Too, it doesn't stray too far from the formula, and overall, is pretty good. And then you have more um, actual street races, which makes it more fun and kind of brings it back around to the um, roots of the franchise. And then, of course, they're setting up another film, so we'll see whatever they do for Fast Eleven. Um, so, with that being said, I did have a chance to watch a couple of TV shows. So, to start it off, I had a chance to watch the season premiere for The Walking Dead. Dead City. So the first episode is titled Old Acquaintances. Um, this is essentially the introduction to the show. We have um, Maggie's son um, being kidnapped by a guy who used to work for Negan, has that same whistle and everything. He's called the Croat. He's hiding out in Manhattan. So Maggie goes looking for Negan to have him help her find that guy and her son. And because a guy used to work for Negan, he knows how the guy thinks. But Negan does acknowledge that this guy was on the crazier side of his henchmen so even worse than Negan um which was so we're gonna they're, they're kind of setting up that premise I hope it's not the whole season but we'll see how it goes but I did like the performance and acting by the Croat um who kind of has that craziness you can see it's there is bubbling up and um but essentially he's still at the moment he's kind of just a generic bad guy but We'll see if they give him a little bit more to do or if maybe he's built, built up a bigger empire in Manhattan that we think. Um, originally, I was thinking that the episode was not as good as I thought just because a lot of it takes place at night in the dark. But it actually proves good as far as the ambience of it because there's no power. This is a zombie apocalypse, so of course it's going to be dark. It adds to the scare factor of it, the uncertainty. And then you have a little bit of the Watchmen kind of scenario with the squids but in this case you have zombies being dropped from the building so um in general it just worked it is a slow a slow burn for the season premiere so that was kind of the only downside to it but overall the interactions with Maggie and Negan were good it's nothing too out of the ordinary there but it also feels like they're trying to get that stuff out of the way so they can move on to the rest of the show for the rest of the season so we'll see how it goes but overall a decent enough start i enjoyed it and we'll see where it goes from here and then i also had a chance to watch uh, marvel's secret invasion season premiere um resurrections so basically same thing here we have nick fury coming back to earth from a project that he's working on in space called Saber. So um, I actually still need to look up what that project is all about, but essentially we have everyone wondering where he went, especially Maria Hill and the people around the world. But now that he's back, no one's quite sure why he's back, what he's up to, the reason for why he's back and all that. So we'll see where it goes from here. But it was good to see them, or basically as this season premiere goes, it was basically just another set up for the rest of the season. Uh, this is a mini series, so they only have, I think, six episodes to do what they want to do in the show. So um, I'm not quite sure where they're going to go with it, but it seems interesting enough. So um, 
We'll see. Um, much like the Walking Dead City, I'm going to reserve judgment until later in the season to see if it's good, how they deal, in this case, with the scrolls and what's going on here. So with that being said, um, as far as the video game updates go, I had a chance to finish playing Assassin's Creed Origin. I think as of la the last um, episode, I only had a couple of... Um, um, chapters or missions to complete so now that those are all done um and the game is complete i actually find that i had a really good time playing it the visuals were great um the story was really good so my only thing i guess if i ever get around to playing the sequel um after origins i think it's called odyssey is probably to spend a little bit more time on the side missions the side quests the smaller like neighbor or like the, whatever you need to do around the various towns to build up your XP and uh, level up a little bit more. Just because I realized after the fact and later in the game that by leveling up the character a lot of the game later on with the missions becomes that much easier. On the flip side, if I do everything the same way as I did this time, going back to level up is easier, but then it's harder to level up when, when you're going from level... 30 to 31 instead of when you're going early on from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 because as far as I can tell from these types of games where you level up those early levels it's very very easy to do simple missions and level up so doing those early on of course is what they intend for you to do so um, as far as the downside goes nothing on the game front and nothing really Xbox Game Pass related I want to say that it's more of a personal bandwidth issue so I have 500 megabytes down I think 25 megabytes up so I think that discrepancy between that and possibly my router um, there was all you, you could have seen it you probably saw in the later gameplays that there was a lot of glitching and lag and just general network issues um, changing my DNS to Google DNS seems to work seem to have worked a lot better to keep it stable but it still had that issue so um i want to say the internet that as far as streaming gameplay videos it is better to have symmetrical internet and it doesn't necessarily have to be gigabyte internet as long as you have the same upload and download speed whether it's 350 500 700 megabytes a second whatever i think having it be the same up and down upload and download speeds will make a gameplay better so for now, I'm going to hold off on resuming that gameplay until I upgrade my internet. Um, but once that's done, I'm going to give it another try to see if that works better and if that's the case. If that fixes it, then a sweet um, internet was a cause. If that still doesn't fix it, then I'll know that, that was a, it's a, more of an Xbox Game Pass thing with servers or maybe how busy they are or things like that. But overall, Assassin's Creed Origins, I recommend it. It's a good, fun game. Um, I know I probably didn't spend as much time actually being an assassin and sneaking around and all that as much as I should have, but later in the game it is very important to sneak around to do that if your character is, um, is not built up on the strength and um, attack side of things. And there are areas where they do want you to sneak around quite a bit, so going at night is um, useful or taking advantage of the buildings that you're trying to climb on is also very useful. So. I recommend playing it though, it's a fun game, graphics are good. Um, playing the various missions regardless of when you're playing them are all really fun. It's not, it was nice to be able to climb on top of the Sphinx and the Pyramid and onto various structures. It was good to head to Rome and see the, you know, the Colosseum and Roman cities and all of that. So all of that played into ni itself nicely along with the story. So with that being said, as far as the, the next gameplay, I was thinking if I wanted to do another Doom mod or replay Knights of the Old Republic. And I got to thinking because the trailer for Star Wars Outlaws came out, uh, one of their newer games that they're releasing as part of the Star Wars game suite or whatever that they're pushing out or LucasArts games or whatever. And I got to thinking that it's been a while since I've played a female character in Knights of the Old Republic. I think I've only played maybe once or twice. And I know that there's a romance that develops between your main character as a female, between her and Karth, 
versus if you play a male character, then you create a romance between your character and Bastella. So I don't remember that I ever developed that properly, that relationship properly with Karth. So I got to thinking that I would create a female uh, Mace Window Mace Window style build, so a strong soldier warrior type character to kind of bring that whole Vapod thing, that the whole style of fighting that Mace Window brings that's very aggressive and strong. So that's kind of where the soldier com part comes in. Granted, his fighting style is not something that's available in Knights of the Old Republic. So that's why my kind of way around it is picking a soldier. And then I, pick, I picked the Consular Jedi build um, because it's a kind of high force focus style character, which is what he has. He's strong in the force. So I'm kind of working on a character that merges two different um, placed or um, character styles into one. So essentially a strong lightsaber user with a lot of force powers is kind of where I'm going with it. So that automatically right off the bat gives a high armor um, ability so I can already get a high armor once I'm able to get, you know, Revan's robes or better um, Jedi robes or whatever. And then I've also, so far since I played the game, I've already been able to get Master Flurry so, and set up lightsaber focus so the attacks are strong and fast. Um, and essentially things like that from there, you know, I'm building up a lot of strength and um, wisdom so I'm focusing on the lights on the force and the tag parts and then everything else is kind of subsidiary where once I set up I think one more point in all the subsidiary um, style um, uh, character style of points so things like constitution and dexterity intelligence and all of that stuff then I can work on the force points and attack to build up the character that much more for that sort of stuff um, the main thing here is I don't know how I'm going to handle, you know, repair points and security and stuff like that because I think it's going to have fewer points on that front, um, especially since I think I bolt up on health quite a bit already. So um, I'm going to do something along those lines where I started setting up repair points, but I'm also probably going to have to set up, you know, computer and security as well. Um, I'm also going to do a little bit of a, a workaround hack where I'm going to see how many um, repair parts I think I need for Revan's robes when I'm on the Star Forge, and probably either just make sure I have you know a whole bunch of um, in, or enough repair parts to build them. I think you need 25 if your repair and security are low. Um, and if they're high enough, then, you know, it comes down to like 10 or 8 or like the multiplier goes down based on how much your repair and computer parts are. So, um, essentially, I'm still working my way through that part of it, but I know that there is a vendor on, I think it's Manon, that sells, you know, infinite um, parts that you can use for that later in the game. So, essentially, if I bulk up on that, set it you know by you know 500 or whatever then i should be good to go and that's all irrelevant to the point of um once i defeat the uh, rodian on yavin station for pazak then i can start selling him all my goods make sure i have enough credits to buy out those parts um so as of this recording one of the other things was i was setting up my usual mods to use to play the game so I am using Jedi from the start, easy Pazak and easy swoop racing. So for the Pazak part, it makes it easier to beat the Rodian and I don't have to spend two hours trying to beat him to get a discount on his goods. And then for swoop racing, same thing. I want to be able to complete those missions. So that way I can move on, complete them, get the experience points and not have to worry about the um, obstacles and the times and all of that stuff and essentially just be able to play the game and complete the missions. And then Jedi from the start is also pretty self-explanatory where you know, I start off with the game as a Jedi to mimic what we see in Knights of the Old Republic 2, but also leveling up my character as a Jedi from the start so that I can start taking advantage of those skills and points and things like that rather than having to level up my character without it and worry about what to how to allocate the points later uh, or do what I see on the internet where you know I don't level up my character beyond level two 
and then not level up until I get to Dantooine. So instead of worrying about all that, Jedi from the start solves that. Now I was also going to use a bunch of mods as far as visual enhancements. So for cutscenes and uh, level maps and in-game worlds and visuals and stuff like that. But initially in the playthrough, while I'm still on Terrace, um, we do see that initial flirting between my character and Carthonassi, and it creates a very weird, like, junk error message that there's a null error code or something like that in the conversation. So I'm unable to proceed, but then the game still keeps asking me or telling me that, hey, you need to talk to Karth, it sounds like something's on his mind. So rather than spend the time that I currently don't have to figure out which mod was causing the issue, um, because I know Jedi from the start, Easy Pazak and Easy Swoop Racing work, I got rid of all the visual enhancement mods and uh, tried to go through that conversation without those visual enhancement mods and I was able to get through it so I know it's one of those that's causing the problem so essentially I'm just going to skip the visual enhancement mods for this time and while I was just going to focus on the story what I was also hoping that I could use uh, more like those visual fixes for a better visual gameplay but because it's causing issues um, I decided to move on and not use them so from the net after the second gameplay video from then on you'll see that it reverted to the vanilla visuals but I'm still using the three mods I noted so that um, I can focus on the story and the missions of or the important missions and not have to worry about Pazak and uh, Swoop Racing getting in the way. So that is all for this particular episode. So as far as the update from last week's episode, the main update that I have now is that if you are a Google Once a subscriber and you're enjoying um, using the cinematic photo mode, um, there is actually an easier way to create that cinematic photo from a picture in your gallery. So rather than clicking on library and then utilities and then cinematic photo, when you open Google Photos, what you can do is long press on the picture that you want to change. And when you click on add to, it'll give you that option for cinematic photo right in that menu. And you can create it right from there. You don't have to go through into any other screens or menus or navigate anywhere else. It's all right there on that main screen. It'll create the preview of the cinematic video. So you can hit save and you're all done. You don't have to navigate around anywhere else. So. That's something that I found out after I recorded last week's episode, so I thought I would give that little bit of an update on this episode. So that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on the post on the social media networks that I'm on by visiting headphonesneal.reviews. Um, the website also has links to past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Of course, by visiting the Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. Um, you can get early access to the podcast when it becomes available, an ad-free version of it as well, and all of that good stuff to help support my content. Um, gameplay videos for Knights of the Old Republic will be on the YouTube channel as always at youtube.com slash pateln01. Now, as far as the next TV show that I'm watching, so... Aside from The Walking Dead, Dead City, and Marvel's Secret Invasion, I thought I would do a rewatch of the Game of Thrones series. So it's been a few years now we're outside of the realm of um, the actual show, and I mean the controversy is still there as far as how, about how it ended, but I thought I would give it a full rewatch just to see if it's truly worth it, get around my personal um, bias of um, actually enjoying the ending for the most part. Um, do I agree that um, Bran should have been the new king? No, I think I, should, I still think I should have been John with Bran in a more advisor or grand maester role. But that's why I'm giving the show another watch to um, give it another chance as far as that ending. The last couple of seasons that everyone had issues and qualms about. So um, that's going to be the next um, review that I put out as far as TV shows go. So from the next episode, I do plan to give up regular progress update for where I'm at in the show. Kind of um, outside of, you know, a season by season review, just more of here's why or where I'm at in the show and what I think of it and just a general progress update kind of thing. And then once I'm done with the show, I'll give my full on proper review. So that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning into this. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.